Ness starts by a quote from Rambo, who was one of the main developers of UML. In 1993, he said, Novice modellers tend to overuse generalisation, simply to distinguish sets of objects. Don't introduce a subclass simply to represent a subset of the values a class can hold. We'll be looking at what this means in detail in a minute. Um, first of all, let's consider an example. This is from an excellent book by Martin Fowler called UML Distilled. It's got this nice little diagram here, which is a person, which is a superclass, various generalization sets. So the first generalization set it's got is male and female. So male and female are subtypes of person. Does that sound sensible? Well, I would argue it isn't. And one of the reasons for that, or well, the main reason is, because there's a thing called the enumeration problem. And this is when all the subclasses have the same form. So what do I mean by the same form? By well, the same form, I mean they all have the similar attributes and methods. You'll notice the only two attributes, the male and female, are adding to the superclass person is sex. And let's take an example of two instances here. We've got Mary, who's a female, and John, who's a male. Right, so, class female has a sex value of 2, and male has a sex value of 1. Um, and the person, super type, as we noticed, doesn't have any sex value at all. Really, what we've done is just taken one attribute and given them a particular value to distinguish them. And that's all an enumerated data type is. Here's an example of an enumerated data type, which we call sex. And it can take two values, male or female, which we can give a numeric value to. So we can just simply add sex to our new person type, the right hand side there, and give each instance a value of one or two. And we don't need to use subtype at all. So, can you always do this? Well, you can do this, obviously, if all the subtypes have the same form, i.e. the same attributes and the same methods. If they don't, then it's a good reason to have a set of subtypes and use inheritance. So if we look back at Fowler's example, we'll see he has doctor, nurse and physiotherapist as another generalization set. And that seems very sensible because probably doctor, nurse, and physiotherapist would have very different forms, would have different attributes, different methods. We'll now look at some more examples of enumerated data types. Here's three. Month has 12 what we call enumeration values in it. Zam type, music type. So basically anything where you think in terms of interface, you've got a drop-down list box. You've got an enumerated data type, really. So, how can we tell if the subtype should just be an enumerated data type? Well, if all the, data, all the subtypes have the same form, probably, we should convert them to the superclass and add an enumerated data type in that superclass. Let's look at the, how PCC example, a primary care centre example, and see if I actually made appropriate use of inheritance generalisation here. Well, I had carer, who was a super class, and then employee, student, a voluntary worker. We say that they have the same form. Well, the only way you can tell is actually by looking at the attributes. So if we go down and look at the attributes. Here is our attributes displayed now in our diagram. And we've got Cara with four attributes, surname, date of birth, date started, and next of kin. So all three subtypes would inherit those four attributes. Employee has additionally two more attributes, national insurance number, and I guess an agency name. Student has four attributes, institution, level, end date when they're finished, I guess, their appointment in the PCC, um, and an assignment, if they have to do any assignments. Similarly, voluntary worker has got 
they're associated with a charity, and whether that charity will make any contribution to their work there. So, if we notice, they are different forms. All I've done here is put in um, the attributes, but what would be sensible, of course, also is consider the various methods. So when we're talking about form, we're talking about not just attributes, but methods as well. If each of those had different methods, which they would do, um, that would be another indication that they should stay as subclasses. Here's another example from the literature. This was taken from um, a freely available UML document called Clinical Observations Access Service Specification. You can get this on the OMG website. So this is to do with collecting data about clinical observations, specifically multimedia data. So here it's saying is that multimedia data can be one of eight or nine subtypes, including application, audio, image, message. It seems very sensible to me. I think it's worthwhile mentioning that this problem has been highlighted again by Rambo um, in his book, which is written and been republished after 10 years in a new edition, but also in the original article, which you'll find in the Journal of Object Model Programming um, in 1993. And he titled the article, Mahorn's Modeling Dilemma, Choosing Amongst Alternative Modeling Constructs. It's an excellent article. And it gives lots of examples besides this problem um, of enumeration and subtypes. He gives a nice example of book, where you've got book as a superglass, and you've got three subtypes, which is leather bound, buff leather, or paperback. And obviously, that's just a numerated type, really, of cover that you would have, and you wouldn't need those three subtypes. I mentioned enumeration. Um, in UML and how this can solve some necessary inheritance um, hierarchies. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about doing this in terms of the diagram, but it is quite nice to include details of enumerated data types in any narrative that you write, including the diagrams. So here is an example. Um, in this diagram here is product, which is an enumerated type, and you've got product can be either paper, pen, bag, or I don't know what cat would stand for, but it's obviously any type of product. Right, so if we just look down here, how would you do it in Magic Draw? We start off by clicking on class, and then up comes the submenu if you click on the side of class, and one of the subtypes is enumeration. So you click on enumeration, then you get what looks like a class to add into a diagram. You click on it to bring up name, you enter the name of your enumerated type, and then once you've done that, you choose the enumeration literals, you know, from the right hand side, just there, and then you add each of your various options, you can the drop down this box, so I've added female and male there, and I've got my new enumerated type there, sex, which can take two values, male, female. Then to make use of our type, we have to obviously um, reference it in the class that we want to make use of that enumerated type. So what you do is click on the actual class, which I've got here as person new, and then I select the attribute I'm interested in, and then click on the type, and then from the drop down list box that appears, you can choose sex, which is my enumerated type I've already specified. And then it appears in the diagram there, gender is what type of sex, and sex is an enumerated type, which will take two values. Um, I find actually putting it in a UML diagram like that, showing all your enumerated types is a bit messy and becomes ridiculous. So I would offer an alternative, better solution, I think, is to, yes, specify the enumerated types in your classes. Um, but don't bother to show the actual enumeration um, stereotype class. Rather, leave that off and just put in the narrative accompanying the diagram what the actual values of that enumerated type can take. And there is a very quick and easy way of actually doing 
the um, indication of enumerated types in your class is just by typing it in. So simply when you type in your tribute name, add a colon at the end of it, and type in what you want the enumerated type to be called. And that works fine.